Aloha, it's 365Y. With Eric and Julie Zemelis, and we're here in our own backyard. And today we're going to give you a quick video of something that was pretty interesting and we did an event, but we wanted to kind of give you an introduction to the event so you kind of knew what was happening. Yeah. So um, uh, I have a new foundation. You might know. I've heard about it. It's 365 Hawaii Island Community Fund. And one of our board members, Cindy Ponahale, actually is in charge of the Reef Teach program down at Ka'alu Bay. And she actually invited us to come to a special opening of a new facility up at the Natural Energy Lab. Okay, hey, it's Julie Zimlis, 365 Hawaii, and uh, we were invited here today for a ribbon cutting for a um, new program that actually helps restore coral. And um, as you're going to see in this video, um, we have uh, Hawaiian community leaders from all along the shoreline who are really excited to see someone being able to lend hope to the reef line because of the reef degradation. So here what they're doing is they're taking basically stressed coral that they find out along the reef area and they bring it here and they're basically um, restoring it to good health. And then what they do, they're going to take it back out into the reef and then hopefully with that healthy coral, when it spawns, it can then help reshape the reef with new um, coral. So they're not like making new coral here. They're taking stress coral and they're basically, basically regenerating. It's like, you know how they do with the monk seals when they're hurt? It's basically, it's like, but the coral is here. And um, this has been a multi-agency experience to get this all together to bring hope to our coral reefs. So we're going to show you a little bit more about what happened today, but man, it's really awesome to be here and see the hope that we're going to see for our coral reefs. <laughs> from Ho Kena, Minoli, Ho Nau Nau. We all, us Kanaka, mahalo you with our aloha. Okay, baby. Go spawny. <laughs> Woo First girl! All right! Yay. Okay, wherever we gonna put it? Wherever you want. Wherever I want. Yeah, yes. that one can just can go just in the raceway. It doesn't have to go in the crate. Okay. All right, here we go. There you go. Okay, so we're down at the Natural Energy Lab and we are here for basically a ribbon cutting of uh, basically what's going to be the start of an amazing coral restoration. And Jason Ash is the gentleman that's actually created these experiences for these little coral cake to grow. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing here today and what you've done with all creating this whole facility? So what we're doing here today is we're actually having a, a ribbon cutting to, to kind of bless this facility. This facility I built is actually a restoration facility and it's mainly to bring in injured or broken coral to revive and we can put it back mm -hmm. into the ocean. So by building this facility, it's, it's a step forward into what we can do to help preserve and bring back the reefs here on the side. There we go. And I heard um, them say that some of that reef, I mean the coral was found like hanging on something where it would have died anyway so they were able to basically yes. save it yes and bring it here yes and then it's going to be replanted, replanted back into the actual yes and so how long does that like process take like how when it's from here to there it depends on uh, how big of a, what they call a species species you know species or, or a fragment uh -huh. it depends on how big it is uh -huh. and it also depends on how stressed it is mm. so for me what understanding from all these scientists and biologists is what they what they get it depends on how well they've been out there or how stressed they've been mm. so that time will take we'll see you know if it's mildly stressed mm -hmm. it could take two three months months okay if it's really stressed it could take six to eight months, mm -hmm. in a year. it all depends on the size of the fragments and how much they got stressed oh interesting wow and so um show the show the the facility how many of these tops are actually here to do this work okay so these these here we call it uh raceways and there's 72 of them 72 yeah so the first 36 they're actually monitored by what we call a filtration container. So the water that comes in, it gets filtered, and then it gets dispersed to each and every tank from this filtration container. 
We also have a second set of 36, including 72 altogether. It's also run by a second filtration container. So at one time, we can have all 72 running. Each raceway or each tank can pull anywhere from 150 to 1,000. Wow, wow. And the water that's used, being used for mm -hmm. the coral is mm -hmm. being pulled up from the ocean. Right. By what Vanilla actually offers is the fresh water from the ocean. Right. To come out here and to recycle through fresh, yes. fresh yes. ocean water. So actually, the water that's been pumped from the ocean is actually seawater. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's two different types of seawater. So there's what we call a surface seawater. Mm -hmm. The depth of that is anywhere from 2,100 feet to 2,300 feet. Mm -hmm. The second type of water is called deep sea water. That is anywhere from 3,500 to 3,800 feet down below. Those two different heights of water, they bring in different temperatures. So by bringing in both, we can adjust each one to bring an optimal temperature that's needed for the pond. So it's not too cold because the one at the very bottom is cold. Yeah. That's probably a lot of nutrients and minerals. Well, too, right? the, the bottom, the deep sea has a lot of nutrients, but sometimes corals don't need a whole lot of nutrients. Ah, okay. You know? And the surface one is basically, that's the that's what the corals used to, to the surface. Yeah. But as the water gets pumped up, it heats up. And that's the number one kill of coral, oh, that's right. is heated water. Mm -hmm. So we're having a deep sea, right? yeah. we bring it down to a temperature where they can manage and they can survive and rejuvenate themselves. Thank you. Congratulations. No, awesome. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. So I just learned this, that, that the Hawaiian Island has one of the largest selections of coral reefs, which is 120 miles of all the Hawaiian archipelagos. Interesting, huh? So that's where this uh, these corals that they're going to be restoring are going to be placed along in uh, in areas that they might have some problems, particularly because uh, I think it was 2016 we had that chloral bleaching that took out a, took out a good amount of them, is what it did. Right, and so um, one of the things though too, I think was touching during the the ceremony, which we didn't get a chance to film, um, Hawaiian families who have basically grown up on these the lands around these bays. For generations were in attendance and the one from Hononau was basically almost in tears about how much degradation she has seen in that bay. Um, a lot of tourists are putting themselves onto that space. We got a lot of people that are in all of our bays and it is making a difference and so when they got a chance to see a facility that was going to maybe help them restore the coral, they used the word hope where Watching something consistently degrade is very sad. And for these guys to think that, hey, maybe these research scientists and educators can come in and create something that is actually going to help the reef grow again, it was fantastic. Just having that kind of hope in a room full of people who are watching things just constantly just kind of, and also we all are because of climate yeah, change everything, and everything else. It's sad. <laughs> so at least this is going to help that. And I, and I will. I, I must say, being there, I, I, I felt privileged to think that this was happening right, right here in, in Kona. And this is uh, up at the Natural Energy Labs is where it's going to be. And it's right by the uh, by the big white solar panels. You can almost see it right as you're driving right, by in the right. car. And uh, they're going to do a grand opening. So all of you guys can come and do it uh, in July. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let you know a few weeks in advance when that will be. So if anybody wants to go, you can go and see it. They're going to let you see the, the run, what do they call them, runways? Yeah. Um, yeah. Of race the, race, race, race ways. Yeah. Of the, um, the um, you know, the whole facility. Uh, but also to learn more about what they're doing for this whole experience uh, we are reading in their little pamphlet that this is going to be a research facility so this isn't just going to be what they're doing right now but this is like they're going to be creating new opportunities heading into the future to create new ways to help the reefs uh, around the world so um if you can if you love the whole coral experience and understanding how they like you know restore um the uh, coastline with the reef this is going to be something that is going to be a treasure for our people on our hawaiian island and also for visitors who want to see <laughs> founder of the 365 Hawaii Island Community Fund, um, being able to bring this information to a larger audience so they can see what's happening on this island and all the cool things, but also because this facility is going to need volunteers. And our fund actually helps find spaces for volunteers to do great work on the island to um, help um, the Aina and the ocean. Um, so if you are interested, uh, join our 365 Community Volunteers Group on Facebook. Um, you can also learn more about our fund at 365HawaiiIslandCommunityFund.com and I'll put that in the list. Um, and again, if you want to give back to the island, we will be more than happy to take your name. Aloha!